Good evening, good evening and welcome to the Non Hath Ascended Podcast. For scarcely a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us much more than having now been justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the, the death of his son much more having been reconciled we shall be saved by his life and not only that but we also rejoice in god through our lord jesus christ through whom we have now received the reconciliation therefore just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam who is a type of him who was to come but the free gift is not like the offense for if by the one man's offense many died much more the grace of god and the gift by the grace of the one man jesus christ abounded to many and the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification for if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ therefore as through one man's offense judgment came to all men resulting in condemnation even so through the man's righteous act the free gift came to all men resulting in justification of life for as many for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous moreover the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abounded grace abounded much more so as sin reigned in death 
even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. For if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead dies no more death no longer has dominion over him Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And...
and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Wow. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves, slaves who obey, you are that one's slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves who obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Mm. You became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members 
as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness for when you were slaves of sin you were set you were free in regard to righteousness What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit in holiness and the end, everlasting life, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives but if the husband dies she is released from the law of her husband so then while her husband lives she marries another man she will be called an adulteress but if her husband dies, she is free from the law, so, so that she is no adulteress, though she has married another man. And therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ that you may be married to another to him who has raised from the dead who was raised from the dead that we should bear fruit to God for when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would try, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, You shall not covet. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, 
produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. And the commandment, which was to bring life, I found to bring death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it killed me. Therefore, the law is holy. And the commandments, holy and just and good. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good, so that sin, through the commandment, might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. Whoa. If then I do what I will not. What? What? For if we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin, for what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good.
But now, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I do that in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me but how to perform what is good I do not find for the good that I will to do I do not do but the evil I will not to do that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me the one who wills to do good <laughs> oh yeah Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I can find then a law that evil is present with me. I find then a law that evil is present with me. Whoa. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good.
for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. There is, therefore, now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Hmm. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled 
in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now, If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of of the body you will live for as many as are led by the Spirit of God these are sons of God for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which
which shall be revealed in us. For the earliest, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because creation, the creation itself, also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope, for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good, to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own Son, but delivered him up for us, all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things?
Whoa. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, whom is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creation nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord.